The PlayStation Vita has been in the news quite a bit recently, mostly for negative reasons, let's be real here, but that does not diminish my love and admiration for the little portable that could. No. In fact, I just got my first Vita last summer. Correction, I got two Vitas last year, that's how much I enjoy the damn thing. And even though I'm a little bit late to the Vita party, I have enjoyed my time with it immensely. It is a wonderful system, and it goes to show that it is never too late to join the Vita bandwagon. And to that point, here is 21 reasons to still own a PlayStation Vita in the year 2021. Let's get to it. PlayStation Network Store is still active. It's still there. Right there. It's still going strong. They come in a variety of colors. I only have I only have two. As much as we love the Nintendo Switch, the PlayStation Vita is a refreshing change of pace. The ergonomics of the system are absolutely delightful, and it offers not one but two touch inputs that actually feel useful. And let's not forget that the Vita is significantly lighter than the Switch. Even the standard OLED model weighs less than the Switch Lite. And you know what that means, less weight equals more comfort for those prolonged gaming sessions. And speaking of the OLED version, you have options. Mostly just two, kind of a third option, we'll get more to that later. But it is nice, however, to ultimately decide what you want out of your Vita system. Whether that be the gorgeous OLED display of the original, or the better battery life, and better form factor in my opinion, of the slim version. Oh, we can't forget about the one gigabyte of internal storage that the slim offers. But hey, I guess one is better than none. This just might be me, but I really appreciate the fact that the slim version, at least, uses micro USB Type B ports, which PS4 controllers also use. PS5 what? And also, my nearly five-year-old Galaxy S7 Edge still uses that charging port. Might get a new phone at the end of the year? Eh, we'll see. And you can call me old school if you like, but I still love me some 3.5mm headphone jacks. Now, as much as I love my PSP, the Vita is pretty much better in every conceivable way. A true successor, if you will. The PSP's D-pad and face buttons might have a slight advantage over the Vita's, but again, it's a numbers game, baby, and this time, two is better than one. The solo stick frankly just doesn't cut it, I'm afraid. You really do need two inputs, and the Vita delivers that. With two analog sticks that offer greater comfort and range of motion, it's a no-brainer. Now, if we only got another set of shoulder buttons. And if you dare breathe the words, hoary grip, I will come at you with a vengeance, my friend. <sighs> Quick question. How many 16-year-olds actually kept their original PSP box? Hmm, probably not that many. Now I bet a lot of you are asking yourself the same question. Carson, there's no way possible that you kept your Family Guy the freaking sweet collection on UMD video, right? Ah, well that's where you'd be wrong. Ah, uh, here's a fun one. Your Vita battery probably, most likely won't, at least in the near future, bloat like a PSP's battery has historically in the last couple of years or so. That's a pretty bad thing right there. You don't want your batteries looking like double stuffed Oreos, especially when they're nestled into your system. A recipe for disaster if you ask me. So yeah, PSA time. Do yourself a favor and check those batteries. Pretty much just keep them stored away when you're not actively using them. Simple as that. And don't you dare fret, because my original Pandora battery is 100% intact. Scotch tape and all. Man, teenagers can be stupid. Tch. At least use 
electrical tape, dude. Come on. Well, 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 things are certainly starting to heat up. Because this little symbol right here signifies a catalyst that completely changes your Vita into something far, far greater. From Sony's own lackluster offerings to something much, much more powerful, it could quite possibly be the greatest paradigm shift in human history. And that, my friends, is a custom firmware. A tool a modern-day Vita user should not be without. This Vita right here is running a Hinkaku Inzo 3.65, which in my humble opinion is the most versatile of the custom firmwares. With the relative ease of modifying your system and the ugh, eventual closure of the PSN store on Vita, installing a custom firmware should be on everybody's to-do list if you haven't already. And just a heads up, the rest of this video is pretty CFW heavy, so if you don't like that, then I'm sorry? And moving right along, we have plugins galore, thank goodness. Auto Plugin is an amazing application that allows you to hyper-customize the system to your liking. Don't like something? You can probably change it here. Being able to modify the boot screen, the status bar, and the quick menu are all super helpful features. A favorite of mine, VitaShell, is an indispensable tool that allows you to underclock or overclock your system. It allows the user to get a locked and steady FPS in games like Uncharted and Killzone. I mean, it boggles my mind because I cannot go back to stock speeds in some of these games. Like sub 30 FPS? Um, no thank you. I know that it uses more battery life, but come on, it's worth it. Now some of you might have been wondering throughout the video how exactly I'm controlling the Vita. Well guess what? It's another plug-in, that's right. You can connect your DualShock 3 or 4 to the PlayStation Vita. Pretty damn cool if you ask me. Can I get a drum roll please, because this next plug-in is so special it deserves its own segment. A function which nearly has become synonymous with custom firmware itself due to its practicality and cost-saving measures. That's the SD to Vita adapter, a true game changer. This wonderful device allows everybody to circumvent Sony's proprietary memory card with their own SD for storage. You think they would have learned with the PSP, but guess what? It only got worse. I use this nifty little application here, switch SD to Vita, to easily change between my micro SD and physical Vita games. Works like a charm. The massive bump in storage truly is a quality of life change, and you could even go all digital with this if you really wanted to. I mean, just look at all those games and applications. Bubbles make me happy. Buckle up, because we got more to unpack. You hear that? Mm. That is the sweet sound of nostalgia. Yes, that's right. Since the Vita has PSP hardware inside of it, you can directly boot up the operating system with the power of adrenaline, like you were actually on a PSP. Really takes me back. In turn, this pretty much makes the Vita one of the best options for portable PS1 emulation. Plus, it was pretty fun just to throw on some of my PSP's old applications from years ago, just to take a trip down memory lane. Yeah. I'm not sure about everybody else, but playing PS1 games on the Vita just feels right at home. One of my favorite ways to play all those classic games from back in the day. That honor used to belong to the PSP, but ah, I have moved on to bigger and better screens. <laughs> Try this one on for size, everybody. What did Sony say to the PSP and PS Vita hackers? Hey wait! Stop! Spoiler alert. <laughs> they did not. With RetroArch and the ability to emulate other systems, the Vita is essentially a dynamic Raspberry Pi. 
when you factor in the Vita's ability to not only play Vita games, but also PlayStation 1 games, PSP games, PlayStation Mini games, and PS3 and PS4 crossplay games, it makes this device look like a very attractive emulation powerhouse. The Vita truly can be a one-stop shop for all your portable gaming needs. Of course it has its limitations, but there is active improvements in the emulation department every single week. And another thing about the Vita. Wait. Hold on. I gotta take this. Hey dude, how's it going? No, 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 I don't care if you built another Raspberry Pi! I'm so gaming on my Vita, dude! Wait a second. This isn't an engage. Now, I know some people don't care, but trophy support is a nice and welcomed feature. Not only does it catalog and document what games I played and when, but it also gives me that sweet, sweet dopamine rush when I hear the beautiful ping of a trophy. The PlayStation Vita introduced the world to the Gravity Rush series. I mean, need I say more? No, but seriously, the Vita's library is home to several hidden gems like Gravity Rush, Persona 4, Tearaway, the list goes on really. There's something out there for everybody. I was going to say that collecting physical Vita games was relatively cheap, however that is not the case really anymore ever since Sony's announcement of the closure of the PSN store on Vita. Despite that, Vita games are still a blast to collect for. The cases themselves are sleek and awesome looking, and I think I almost like them as much as PSP cases, although I'm still a little torn on that front. Ah, and here we are, the Vita's dreaded PlayStation Store. I don't think there's anything more sad than going to the new release tab on the storefront. Whew, talk about dead man walking, am I right? <laughs> I mean, look at this. The games have no image icons. How demoralizing is that? Ugh, it is what it is. I'll just leave it at that for now. I think this point is still a very valid positive for the Vita, so I'm going to mention it. And that's PlayStation Plus and your PSN back catalog. If you've been part of the service for a while now, like I have, you'll have access to free games that you can download to your system, which in all honesty, is pretty cool. And not only that, PS3 and PS4 crossplay games offer great value to your system as well. You know, it's kind of strange just to scroll throughout your entire purchase history since your PS3 days. A lot of gems, a lot of trash. Trash panic, that is. And here's a store, in a sense, that won't be closing down. That's the homebrew browser. It kept crashing on me a few times, so I had some difficulty trying to capture some footage of it, but I did want to mention it because it is a great feature. Similar to auto plugin, you can just download stuff directly to your system, which is super convenient. Whether that be homebrew games or ports like Quake or another Metroid 2 remake, You can download various emulators for different consoles. And let's not forget utilities like Moonlight, which allows you to stream PC games directly to your Vita. And of course, switch SD to Vita, which I mentioned earlier. PlayStation TV. And here we have that mysterious third option that I was alluding to earlier in the video. That is the PlayStation TV. Just the mere fact that this exists <laughs> is worth, like, noting and recognizing, because how did it get made? It obviously didn't really sell. It's pretty much just a small box that you hook up to your TV, and guess what? There's a Vita inside of it. You're just playing it on a TV. I remember when these puppies were going for about 30 to 40 bucks, and I feel like nobody wanted it at the time. Well, guess what? We're all kicking ourselves now. It's incredible that just this year, somebody ported the mobile version of San Andreas to the PlayStation Vita. 
Oh shit. Here we go again. Unfortunately, I haven't had the privilege to test it out myself, but the fact remains the same. It is cool as hell. You know what's not cool as hell? Having two great spin-off games from a beloved franchise and not making a third one. Why not though? Ugh. Even a simple port of the PS2 version would have brought the Vita to another echelon. It just feels like a missed opportunity all around. All they had to do was port the damn game, CJ. Anybody out there swap games with a friend when they were younger and not get the original game back? Uh, safe to say I lost this trade big time. I'm never getting it back, am I? Ah oh, well, I got it on Xbox and Steam. And the last and most important reason has been Sony's unconditional support of the PlayStation Vita. You know what? No. No. No more living in denial. No more living this... this lie. Sony has pretty much dropped the ball two years after the Vita's release. It has been pretty much all downhill since that point. I mean, what have they been doing? I know they're so fixated on the PS4 at the time, and they wanted to carry that momentum going forward. It just... Uh, if Sony had released the PS4 first, and then maybe the Vita two years later, and, you know, up the specs a bit more, it, it could have been so much more. It could have been, like, the, precur the true precursor to the Nintendo Switch. It could have been a Switch competitor, but no. Sony. I mean... I mean, I just don't get it. I just don't get it, Sony. People were actively developing games for the PlayStation Network, and you're going to shut it down. At least hit the 10-year mark. I feel just last year you stopped making PS2 games. Seriously. What benefits you from shutting off the Vita? It feels like it's some forgotten stepchild that you just shoved underneath the staircase. It's just, it's sad. And there are a couple factors at play here. And I feel the most important one was the launch of the PS4 and how they shifted all of their focus and all of their assets, attention, money towards the PS4. And they really wanted to capitalize on Microsoft botching the Xbox One launch, which they did. And Sony rightfully took advantage of that. And the PS4 just completely took off for the rest of that console cycle. I mean, it's just, it's so tragic to think about, because if Sony just supported the Vita more, it could have been so much greater. <sighs> Instead, they decided to kill it off years ago, and now, just recently, they decided to exhume the corpse, and then cremate it just to make sure it didn't have any life in it. I just, I just don't get it, Sony. What were you thinking? But anyways, that leads me to my true final point, is that you, the community, is the most important thing to the Vita. Yes, the community. The modders, the homebrewers, the guy that shoots Vita hacking tutorials on his iPhone 5 still. I see you. Those are the most important people, and they deserve the recognition for uplifting the Vita and making it into something truly great and viable in this day and age, this current day and age, this present date. Thank you. I want to say thank you to all those people who love and support the Vita, because Sony sure hasn't. Thank you, Sony. Mm. As always, thanks for stopping by, y'all. If you like what you saw, there's more content on the way, more Vita stuff. Who knows? Any support is greatly appreciated. Let me know your thoughts about the current state of the Vita and the PSN store down below in the comments section. I'm very curious about what everybody's thinking. And on that note, stay safe, stay Vita, and I'll see you in the next one.